glad to be back with you. I get lots of questions about Morse Circle, and I've posted several videos about Morse Circle, and these videos are getting a lot of hits, so that tells me they're helpful. That's a great feeling. One of the things that's easy to, to forget is that you can draw Morse Circle using strains rather than stresses. Now remember the big idea with Morse Circle. If you look at the equations that describe how to transform stresses or strains by rotating them, okay, and you plot the, those equations, the result of those equations, on the correct axis, what you get is a circle. And this was important in Moore's time, a long time ago, because this was before computers. If you were going to do calculations, you were going to use a slide rule, and you're going to do a lot of things by hand. He was able to take what would have been a fairly involved calculation and reduce it to uh, geometry that you could work using a uh, compass and a ruler. Right? So if you can make meaningful calculations with a compass and a ruler, that's really handy. That speeds the process up quite a bit. Now that we have calculators and computers, we don't need to do that anymore, so we don't draw more circle out on paper anymore other than for a learning exercise. And it's still a very good learning exercise. So we know how to draw more circle for stresses, and if you're a little fuzzy on that still, that's okay. Go back and look at the earlier videos. Here's how to draw more circle for strains. Okay, so let's say I have strain gauges. Now, strain gauges are too little to show you here, so I've, I made a pretend strain gauge. It's a little piece of magnetic material, and I drew a strain gauge on it. I'll stick it there. All right. Now, in order to draw more circle for strain, I'm going to need three numbers. I'm, I, I will need epsilon in the x direction, so normal strain in the x direction, whatever that happens to be. Let's for my for this example right here. Let's say that's x and that's y. Okay, that corresponds to that over there. And I'm going to need epsilon y, so I'm going to need the strain in the vertical direction. And I'm going to need gamma xy, that's the shear strain between those two axes. Now this is, this is planar, okay? You can do this in 3D, but right now we're sticking with two dimensions. Okay? So we've got a, a one gauge will give us a, a strain in one direction. Well, I'm going to need, if I've got three things I've got to calculate, I'm going to need three gauges. Well. I don't know about a gauge that will measure that. I do My regular gauge measures normal strains. So what I can do is I can take one gauge and another gauge and another gauge and I can make a rosette. Okay? So here's the, here's the way this is going to work. Okay, here's the recipe. I'm going to give you the recipe on how this typically works. One, rosette gives you epsilon A, epsilon B, and epsilon c. It gives you strains, normal strains, in three directions. Okay, we can do a little algebra and we can find epsilon x, epsilon y, and gamma xy. Right? That's step two. I guess I should put a comma there. That's step two. Step three, find epsilon max, epsilon min, and gamma max. Okay, so I will from, I'm going to start with three, three gauges in a, uh, a little uh, arrangement on the surface of some part. And I'm going to measure three normal strains. I'm going to use some algebra and convert those to uh, strain in the x direction, strain in the y direction, and gamma xy. And I've got a couple of videos on how to do that. So if, you, if, if this looks unfamiliar to you, just go back a couple of videos. It's in there. And the last thing is, given that, can I do that? Well, this is how you, what, what, uh, where more circle for strains comes in. More circle for strain will tell you that. Okay, so that's, that's the recipe we're going to follow. So let's say right, that we've already, we already know what epsilon x and epsilon y and gamma xy are from this step here. And let's say epsilon x equals 600 and I'm going to put that mu there. That's for microstrain. That means it's 600 times 10 to the minus 6. I'll write that here. Okay? That's a little more convenient. Mu means micro, means 10 to the minus 6. So you see that a lot. And let's say this is 0 for epsilon y. And let's say gamma xy also turned out to be 600 microstrain. Now these can be anything anything. But it doesn't matter what those three are. You can still plot them on here and it'll still work. I just selected these numbers because they were convenient. Okay? So we're going to do everything like we did with more circle for stress with one exception where this had been normal stress, shear stress, 
This is normal strain. This is one half shear strain. And that one half just drops out of the mathematics. You can go back to a reference perhaps in your strength of materials book or go on the web. Maybe Google will have it or uh, uh, Wikipedia or something. Um, but that one half is there because of the mathematics that describe uh, transformation of strains uh, as you rotate apart. Okay, so we know what epsilon x is, we know what epsilon y is, we know what gamma xy is, and gamma over 2, and I'm going to put that in, make an absolute value there, that's 300 micro, okay? And I put the absolute value there because gamma xy is positive, that means gamma yx is going to be negative, right? So, now that I know all those things, let's go ahead and work through more circle just like we would have with uh, stresses. Okay, so I've got some points on here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, each of those hash marks will be 100 micro strain. So, let's plot the first point, epsilon x, gamma xy over 2. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There's that point right there. Okay. Now I've got to go on the vertical axis. I need gamma x, y over two. So one, two, three, and let's put that right there. I'm going to have to erase this in a second. Okay. Now gamma or epsilon y is zero, and gamma y x is going to be minus 300. So one, two, three. There's the other point right there. So there's my two points. Okay. Now, I need to know what the mean normal st uh, strain is, so it's going to be epsilon x plus epsilon y over 2. That's going to be 300. Okay, so I'll call that maybe epsilon bar. All right. Now, to draw this out, I'm going to need to erase some stuff. So, if you need to uh, do a screenshot of that, go ahead. Okay, so now that I know center point of the circle, and I'm going to know the radius here in a second. Let's see how straight a line I can draw. Eh, that's not very straight. I guess it'll have to do, though. Now, let's pretend I'm doing this on graph paper. I'm going to put the point of my compass there, the compass here, and I'm just going to rotate around. And so, let's see how I can do this here. Oh, boy. Okay, once again, not the world's best circle, but it's going to have to do. Okay, so that's R, that's 300 micro, and that's 300 micro between there and there. So, I know the center of the circle, and I know the radius, so I know everything there is to know about the circle. Now, R is, let's see, square root, uh, and I'll just work this in micro strain plus 300 squared, okay? And if you work the numbers out, you get, let's see, 424.264 uh, micro strain, okay? Now, let's see what that means. This point here is epsilon max, okay? Epsilon max must be the mean strain plus the radius. Let's do that. Epsilon bar plus R. Okay, now see how far down I can go here. Yeah, I'm good. All right, and that's going to be 300 micro plus 424.264 uh, micro. That's 724.264. Now, 264, that's an awfully, that's an awful lot of uh, significant figures to, to use. We're already talking about micro strain. If I had my students report it, I'd probably have them do just 724. That's terrible. There we go. Uh, report 724. Three significant figures is certainly fine here. Okay, let's do the same thing now. Epsilon min. Here, let's just work that over here. Yeah, I guess it's all right. Okay, that's epsilon bar minus r, and that's going to be minus, let's see, minus... 124.264, but minus 124 might gross close enough. And the last thing I need to know is what is gamma max? Well, let's see. Gamma max over 2 is going to be R, right? Gamma max over 2 is 424.264. So gamma max over 2 
424.264. So gamma max equals, make sure I get this right, make sure I get this right. Where did I put it here? There it is. Okay, 828. Uh, let's see, 53 pretty much. Okay, so there's gamma max. Now I know my principal strains. I know epsilon max, epsilon min, which I can sketch in here. It's going to go back over this way. There's epsilon min, there's epsilon max, and there's gamma max right there. Those are the principal strains done using Moore's circle. I hope this helps. Yeah, this is, this is my daughter's cat, Angel, and I'm trying to find out whether including video of cats will make the YouTube video more popular.